Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrids. Unfortunately for many of us, vomit toxin becoming more and more of a reoccurring problem, particularly over the last five or six years. Is this due to changes in farming practices? Is it our weather? Perhaps hybrids today are more susceptible than they once were. Or is it a result of increased fungicide use? So as fungicide adoption and use continues to grow, we thought it important to better understand, could fungicide be helping? perhaps could it be making our situation or a problem even worse. Now, you're not going to see multi-location data here because this is a study that was just conducted at Ohio. This is, uh, vomitoxin is not an issue they deal with to the West. It's more of an Eastern Corn Belt problem and situation. However, we do feel very confident about this one-year data because we did replicate it three different times. Now, before we get into the data, I also think it's important to understand we purposely set this study up to fail. From a research standpoint, we really wanted to see vomitoxin in the grain, and we went to great lengths to ensure that it did. We planted it rather late. Seven, eight, nine days after we planted the rest of the plots, Jared and Tyler and Andrew planted this plot. Planted in corn on corn, so we, we know higher volumes of residue hold more moisture. We used a hybrid that was more susceptible to vomitoxin. Then we actually also hand inoculated the silks with a hand sprayer with the fungus that causes gibberellic ear mold and ultimately vomitoxin. We didn't see a lot of separation in any of the treatments with one exception that was around timing. We used Zyway with the planter, we used Miravis Neo, as you can see, we used Lucento. We also used a cheap hydrogen peroxide. But the, really the only thing that separated itself was timing. Lucento was the only fungicide we applied both just ahead of tassel, V18, as well as that R1. R1 is silking. And what was really interesting is that tassel application, or excuse me, that application made just prior to tassel actually provided us a bigger yield benefit. So just so you understand, V18 is the last leaf that comes out just prior to the tassel being shown and developing and R1 is silking. These two applications were only made four days apart. V18 this year was on a Monday, and R1 was on a Friday. And as you can see, that earlier application actually more, more positively impacted yield. But what was even more encouraging to me was the influence that it had on vomitoxin. As you can see, we actually reduced the vomitoxin levels by about a third by applying it slightly earlier. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting that fungicides reduce vomitoxin. In fact, there's uh, significant data out there that, that that says quite the opposite, that fungicides applied post-tassel can actually elevate vomitoxin. But what I am encouraged by is if you look at the control that had no fungicide whatsoever, as you can see, if you compare that versus the V18 application Lucento, there's virtually no difference when it comes to a vomitoxin level, and yet we still got that 14 bushel yield abandon. Now, why the separation? I think it's important to understand how vomitoxin enters the ear primarily in the first place. The major way or the primary channel in which vomitoxin enters the grain in the first place is the unpollinated silks. This is a picture that I took in, in a field around South Charleston, and this corn had pollinated around the 10th of July, and I took this picture the 16th of August. Those white straggler silks are oftentimes the avenue and the highway allowing for that vomitoxin to enter ear in the first place. Why are they still white? It's because they never pollinated. We think about what has the potential to influence vomitoxin, it's anything that inhibits thorough, complete, successful pollination. So too high a plant population. Nitrogen management plays a role or influence. We know that drought is something out of our control, but that would have an influence. But fungicides can potentially help us as well. I think many of us have heard that fungicides reduce stress. However, that's oftentimes been hard to prove. We know they fight disease, but the fact that they lower stress has been hard to prove up until recently. This is one of the neater things that I've seen over the course of the last couple of years. Here's the proof I was looking for. This is a picture that we took from 2022 in our fungicide timing study. And as you can see on the left, the Veltima, if you focus on the anthers, the anthers contain the pollen. You can see 30, 40, 50% on some plants of the anthers still are clinging to that tassel, meaning it's in full pollination mode. It's still shedding pollen rather, rather abundantly. But if you move to the right, which this picture was only taken six rows or 15 feet over, you can see there's very few anthers still clinging to that tassel, indicating pollination has pretty well commenced. This is significant. And this is proof that fungicides applied, particularly uh, you know, right at tassel or even slightly ahead of tassel, can ultimately lengthen that pollination window, giving us more tr true or thorough complete pollination, leading to less avenues to allow that vomitoxin to enter the grain in the first place. But there's also an environmental role. Talking with Dr. Felipe Delano, who's a PhD student up at Ohio State or completed his PhD up at Ohio State solely on vomitoxin and corn, he said the number one environmental driver to vomitoxin and corn is humidity one to three weeks after it silks or after R1. Plus 80% humidity really provides an environment 
where that's the main drive to higher vomitoxin levels. And look what our humidity levels have done. We went back several decades. This is OSU uh, data out of that Springfield or South Charleston location over the course of July and August, which would consume that one to three weeks uh, post silking. And as you see, our humidity level has certainly been on the rise. Now, we've also been the benefactor of this. You know, if you think about why the humidity levels have increased, it's because we are truly getting more rain in the summer months, which is leading to higher evapotranspiration rates from both the plant as well as the soil surface. And that's providing a more favorable environment for yield, but it's also promoting or leading just to higher levels of ear molds and vomitoxin within our grain as well. Before we conclude, though, I do think it's important to recognize how does this potentially influence uh, and impact the grain that's in the bin? I know with the commodity market, uh, you know, not being particularly positive over the last several months, there's a, probably a lot of grain that's unpriced in the bin and you guys are kind of paralyzed by what to do with it. I think it's also important to keep in mind bullet point number two, the temperature and moisture influence. We know the warmer it gets, the, the, the more likely those spores continue to grow if there is vomitoxin in the bin. And as our ambient temperature gets warmer, obviously the bin will go up uh, much slower than our outside temperature, but also moisture is not our friend. So in summary, the key to lowering vomitoxin is truly through more successful pollination. We know that fungicides ultimately lengthen that pollination window, giving us less of those white or green straggler silks, giving us less of an opportunity for that fungus to ever enter the ear in the first place. There's other things as well that can influence that as well. And when we think about our research today, PFR proven is R1 or silking. That's when we've seen the highest return on investment. However, we are encouraged by our first year's results by possibly applying a fungicide just prior to tassel, lower than that stress level, and ultimately potentially seeing a yield benefit along with a reduction in bomb, particularly as our humidity levels continue to rise. I expect many of you will have further questions. If you do, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Thanks for tuning in.